The K2 Plus from Creality is finally here, let's go. The K2 Plus is actually huge. I don't just mean metaphorically huge, it is actually physically huge. Here it is next to a Prusa XL and there's not a lot of difference. It ships in a huge box and you'll need two people to get it where you want it to be because it's about 50 kilos and there's nowhere to hold it. I had it in my head that it was about the same size as the K1 Max, but it is not. It is way bigger and way heavier. The print volume is also bigger at a frankly ridiculous 350 millimeters in all dimensions. It can easily fit a helmet for anyone's head, even yours, unless you're a horse, which yeah, there's that. Anyway, I'm guessing that's not what most of you want to see. You probably want to see the power consumption, right? I'll get to such minor things as print quality comparisons with the bamboo, for example, in a bit. Nobody really cares about that, I don't think. The K2 Plus most definitely has a mains bed. It has a huge nozzle with a ceramic heater and an actual active chamber heater if you want that. Two chamber heaters, in fact, but we'll have a look inside at a moment and that will make that part clearer. But before we do that, we might as well run through all the other specs, and specs are something this machine is not short of. Creality have thrown almost every technology out there in the 3D printing industry at the moment at this machine, and then some new ones. The K2 Plus is in fact the first four color printer that Creality have released, and it's actually 16 color if you add more CFS, which is what they're calling this multi-filament system. And of course it is like Bamboo's AMS system with the addition of a display on the front, which is quite cool. New or extra CFSs to add on to this cost around £290, which is about the same as the Bamboo ones on average. But the K2 Plus comes with the four-way filament buffer as part of the stock machine so that you don't have to buy a new one in order to add on extra AMSs. We'll look at that thing as well in a minute because these are actually quite clever. The machine has dual side fans instead of one, dual rear fans instead of one, and each can hold a filter of questionable efficacy. And then the aforementioned chamber heater in the middle, with the chamber max temp being 60 degrees. That means that this printer has no less than eight, I think, fans in total? So you'd think it would be loud, but we'll get to that later as well. It is of course a Core XY enclosed printer, but they've yet again upped the specs in this arms race that we find ourselves in. The print speed is the same 600 millimeters per second as the K1 series, which is faster than the bamboo by the way, but the acceleration is 30,000 millimeters squared per second. And you can tell because it shakes the room in a way that I've only ever seen from FL Sun's Delta printers like the S1. This is probably mostly down to the weight of the thing, because it's built like a tank, kind of nothing like the K1 and K1 Max. In fact, in my opinion, it shares very little with the K1 series of printers, to the point where I would speculate that this machine has been developed entirely independently of the K1 series, and may well have taken a lot longer than we think, and may well have been in development at the same time as the K1 series. 
that is entirely a hunch. I just don't think you could develop a machine like this in a year. As amusing as this is, it's actually interesting because there are two IR optical sensors at the bottom and these are used with these two prongs. If the power goes out mid-print, you can expect the bed to drop, and that's by design, but it uses this mechanism to figure out where it is, and for the most part it will actually resume correctly. Interestingly, Creality have raised the game on tool storage with this machine by giving us an actually nice tool case. And if this thing seems familiar, then it's probably because a certain other company does this too. This is a bunch of swatches of the available filament colours. Who knew so many colours of Hyper PLA were available? So the buffer on the back is clever, but it's not new. It seems to work exactly the same way that Bamboo's does, and I always meant to go into how that worked. The reason this exists is to remove the need for the CFS AMS thing to constantly be feeding and trying to turn the spools in sync with the hot end. That would be a difficult task at, at the best of times. Whereas in the Bamboo A series or the Prusa MMU, for example, what happens is the filament is allowed to be pulled naturally without any motors involved straight from the extruder. But because the CFS has motorized feeders, there's a sensor on one end of the buffer. It's probably a Hall effect sensor. And when the part of the buffer hits a certain point, it will ask the CFS to feed a bit more. And it feeds a couple of centimeters or so all at once. And then the buffer will fill up and then it will slowly repeat the cycle. So we need to talk about that chamber heater. It and the bed have two sets of wiring, and you might also notice there's no voltage selector switch on the PSU of the machine either. Creality have made this a true dual voltage printer. There are two heater loops for each of the chamber and bed, or at least that's how it appears. One for 110 volts-ish and one for 220-ish, and somehow, this remains a mystery how, they might be using the actual CPU of the printer, it can tell which one to utilise. As you can see on the FLIR camera in the UK, it uses the right half of the heater. The reason this is good is because it presumably means that Americans with miserable voltages don't have to wait around 10 minutes for the bed to heat up. Here in the UK, it takes a number of seconds for that to happen, I'll put the exact time on screen, if you're in the USA, let me know in the comments how long does your K2 Plus take to heat up if you've got one. So this is actually what people want to see, isn't it? The print quality comparisons. I've had a lot of people ask me about this. I could just show you, but I feel like there's a lot of built-in confirmation bias, especially with Bamboo and Creality. So I think we need to do the quiz thing.
How did you do? Be honest. I will be interested. Let me know in the comments and also whether you are surprised by any of these results. Do you want to talk about the poops now? No, me neither. They are bigger, I think, than bamboo poops because of the longer nozzle. Um, or rather, I think it does multiple poops. It kind of like a rabbit. Uh, sadly, it can't eat them like a rabbit. It would be nice if it did. They are neater than the bamboo ones, which I think might be why the poop chute hasn't blocked yet, or that could just be a better designed chute, or it could just be luck. I, I don't know whether other people's are blocking. In terms of the software, Creality have used Prusa Slicer. I would say they've used Orca Slicer. That's what it looks like to me, which that's a fork of Prusa Slicer. It's a fork of Bamboo Studio, which is a fork of Prusa Slicer. It's forks all the way down. They appear to have written their own version of the Bamboo AMS plugin stuff because that is proprietary. I haven't hugely gone into um, testing it. it. It just kind of seems to work seamlessly. If you have used Bamboo Studio, then this will all look very familiar. And the UI on the printer itself is all very familiar too. You could do things like changing color of the reels and so on. So. What do we have here in the K2 Plus? I think we have something actually truly unusual from Creality. This represents a lot of effort and development on their part. As I said, I think it's more than a year's development. I dare say that the mission brief for whatever team developed this machine was probably someone pointing at a bamboo and saying, make that, but make it bigger and better. And I think in some respects they have achieved that actually. The camera seems better than the next one. It's definitely better than the P1, it has a better frame rate, the bed is bigger, the prints for me have been more reliable with less failures in the AMS, that could be down to just luck. The machine has more toys on it, like the heated chamber, the build quality of the machine is insane, and yes, the build quality is definitely better than bamboo, in my opinion. The proof of the pudding though, out of all this, will be when this thing gets into real users' hands, because that, especially in terms of Creality Machines, is where you really find out how well they've tested this against the incoming horde of normal users that are about to get their hands on this machine, and importantly, whether they'll fix the inevitable problems that will arise. I have no doubt that there will be some. So I think a lot of you might jump on this machine immediately, and I think quite rightly so, but a lot of you will sit back and see how it is when the dust settles a bit, and quite rightly so. And hopefully this will work out okay for a change. And this might give the first real actual competition to Bamboo's flagship series in all aspects, because competition is good and we should all agree that that's the case. Finally, if you do decide to take the plunge and buy one of these, then remember you could support me by using the link in the comments to buy from, because it's an affiliate link. Also, let me know what you think in the comments, as always, and be polite as always, because I know you're always all so polite in the Creality videos. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.